Hey, come on in, everybody. Please let me know if you can't hear me or if you can't uh, see me clearly. I don't know why, but lately I've been having um, some technical difficulties sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but um, make sure you uh, like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed, and please make sure you share this video. We are going to be discussing the latest episode of Married to Medicine, and I believe it was season, hmm, let's see, I wrote it in here, season six, episode 12, titled Heavenly Second Chance, so that's what we'll be discussing tonight. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Are y'all at home cooking? What y'all doing? I'm not cooking. I've been baking for the last 24 hours. <laughs> I am not cooking. I think I'm going to uh, make some more cakes tomorrow, though, to take to my godmom's house. So I can bring a little something, something over there. But I am not cooking Thanksgiving dinner at home. Um, Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving is like one of the holidays that I hardly ever cook at home because um, I'll be having a lot of orders up till Thanksgiving for cakes and desserts and stuff because I'm a baker and a... Well, actually, a custom cake decorator. But anywho, <laughs> so I'd be like swamped and swamped and swamped, cake after cake, order after order, all the way up until Thanksgiving Day. Matter of fact, I just um, finished doing a lot of baking. Uh, I actually got still two cakes that somebody hasn't picked up yet. But they're supposed to pick up tomorrow. But anywho, so yeah, I won't be doing any cooking there. I'll be at my godmom's house and I'm just going to make uh, some dessert to take over there. But I hope everybody is having a wonderful holiday week. And blessings to everybody this Thanksgiving Day. Um, a lot of people have been posting um, YouTube videos on, you know, why are you blessed? What are you, you know, thankful for? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. That's what I meant. What are you thankful for? And I'm hoping everybody, you know, remembers the real meaning of Thanksgiving. It's not always about the turkey and definitely not about the pilgrims, you know. Um, it's mainly about sharing and caring and taking care of each other and socializing with your loved ones and, you know, making memories. So make sure you guys make some memorable moments this week with your family, you know, wherever you go. Whether you're going to your in-laws or your brothers or sisters or mom and dads or whatever, <laughs> just enjoy yourself. <laughs> but um, anywho, we're going to get into this uh, discussion on Married to Medicine and it was actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good episode. Um, I know when I had watched the previews of the episode, I had saw where um, Simone, I mean not Simone, Toya had kept saying that she was going to give Heavenly a second chance. Now. <laughs> Before I saw the episode, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be a hot mess. <laughs> a hot mess because Heavenly, she messed the um, 
couples retreat, the couples therapy and everything up royally last uh, season. But anywho, um, the show opened up with them. You know, they were still on the boat, the ladies and their husbands and quad. And Simone, why is she so loud, y'all? She is so loud. She started getting into it with Contessa. Um... She had told Contessa, you know, she wanted to re-welcome her back into the group or re-welcome them back, you know, into their uh, circle. And Contessa was like, okay, thanks. Even though it was just for surgery, I was just gone because I had surgery. And she got mad. Like Simone got mad talking about, uh, why you keep bringing that up? This ain't about your surgery. This, the, the, I'm like, yeah, it is about the surgery. <laughs> it is about the surgery. What do you mean, Simone? But anywho, um, she was basically telling her, like, she keeps reiterating how she thought that Contessa was, you know, using her surgery, you know, for her double mastectomy as an excuse why she wouldn't hang around the ladies anymore. And... Because, you know, Toya, her and Toya had got into it and they weren't, you know, seeing eye to eye at the moment. But I've never had that kind of surgery before. Um, but I'm pretty sure, you know, I would like to think that she was not um, staying away from the ladies because of Toya. Because Contessa can hold her own. And a few times when her and Toya done got into it, <laughs> Toya don't fit, put no fear in nobody heart. <laughs> she wasn't putting no fear in nobody heart. And plus her and Toya have been friends for a long time. They were like um not getting along, you know, the past few episodes, but they've been friends for a long time. So I knew it would eventually blow over. But she kept, you know, accusing her of using that as an excuse, her mastectomy, why she wasn't coming around. And then her husband, Scott. He had started trying to defend her. And I don't know what y'all think, but I know I hear a lot of times how with these reality shows, um, how some people is like, why people, husbands always got to get into the female, you know, in they discussions and, you know, they got words to say or whatnot. But um, I think he wasn't trying to come at Simone that way. Uh, he basically said she has a good reason why she wasn't coming around you ladies. I mean, she just had a double mistake to me. <laughs> I, I mean, she was like, it hurts to touch. It hurts to lay on her chest. It hurts to, you know, even touch herself uh, for weeks after she had that done. So I don't know why Simone kept bringing that up, that she just didn't want to be around them because of uh, Toya. But anywho, I think she honestly was just trying to, you know, stay home and take care of herself and get better. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but anywho, um, Simone, she was going off. Like, when she be doing that yelling, like, she is so loud. I have never, ever known a woman, well, besides maybe this particular YouTuber. <laughs> No names. <laughs> but I have never heard a woman so loud. Her voice is it's like she has a built-in microphone. And she was just going off and just yelling and screaming and leave me alone and quit talking to me. You know, when she was talking to Dr. Scott, Contessa's husband, quit talking to me and leave me alone. And I was like, oh, my God, she dragging it. But if anybody else other than uh, Heavenly needs anger management, I definitely think it is Simone. I don't know why I didn't think this before, but it's quite obvious. Simone has anger issues. Like, the smallest thing will send her, like, through the roof, and she'll be yelling and screaming, and you can't pull her back. You can't calm her down, but that, that boy... <laughs> She is so loud. I don't know how her husband deals with that, you know, especially probably when they was arguing because, you know, they recently uh, had got back together because they were on the verge of a divorce and we would witness, you know, some of their arguments together. I don't know how she do it. Her voice is so loud and I can imagine 
when her children were little and they could be playing outside. <laughs> they could never, ever use the excuse that they didn't hear their mom calling them in. <laughs> them street lights on? Where y'all at? I don't know their names off the top of my head, but I know the whole neighborhood probably hears her when she be yelling for them kids. But anywho, um, that was kind of like a short-lived argument. I thought it was going to drag out the whole entire uh, episode, but it didn't. Thank God. Um, they quickly put it behind them. And then right after that, they started, you know, enjoying uh, dinner. I don't know who cooked. I, I want to say it was probably Toya's husband. Eugene. I can't remember if the food was catered or not, but that food was looking really, really good. But, um, and the boat that they got from, uh, Dr. Aiden, I thought that was really nice of him to rent that boat out for them so they could all hang out. But anywho, um, when it comes to Mariah, she and Heavily, you know, they're probably the two people on the show that has the most issues between each other. But Mariah, this episode, she was really trying to wave that white flag, you know, by sincerely apologizing to Damon. Um, I knew that he was going to accept her apology, like, right off the bat. Because that's just how Damon is. He is he just seems like a sweet, a really, really sweet person. And I think his feelings were genuinely hurt. Like I I, I can really believe that he was really hurt when he was telling the uh, the husbands. He was like, Why would why would she say that about me? Why would she tell people that I cheat on my wife? I don't cheat on my wife. And I, I really believe him. I really believe him. I, I mean, I don't know them or not. You know, I don't know them like that. But he don't come off as the type of person, you know, who would really cheat, you know, on his wife, on Heavenly. But anywho, she forgive him. And he was like, you know, I accept your apology and everything. And then, you know, Heavenly and everything, they basically is like, you know what? Let's try to move on. You know, let's forgive I won't forget that, you know, <laughs> these ladies tend to hold grudges, but anywho, um, Heavenly and, um, uh, Heavenly and Damon, they just seem like totally opposites to me, but you can definitely tell, you know, that their love for each other is genuine. Um, they've been together, they've been married for a very, very long time. Um, what I like about him is the fact, you know, when Heavenly, was doing the therapy, the couples retreat, how she kept giving him all these compliments and stuff. Like he's the greatest person in the world. And he was looking at her like, why, why, why are you give me all this credit? Like you don't, like you don't do anything. You know, she heavily has a problem giving herself credit, but anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, he seriously, like I said, seems like a nice person and really loves uh, Heavenly, you know, inside out, upside down, her flaws. I mean, her anger issues. He love her, her dirty draws. <laughs> I love her down to her dirty draws. But um, I had been saying over the past, like maybe three or four episodes. I don't know why, like when Mariah first said that, uh, when she first said to, um, where was they at? I think it was Heavenly's, Heavenly had through a barbecue or something like that. And Mariah was like, you know what? I know your husband's cheating on you or, you know, something like that. I kind of was like, where is Mariah getting all this? And why Mariah never brought receipts? Like show after show, episode after episode, Mariah never brought receipts. She finally admitted to, um to Heavenly and her husband, Damon, that they had got into it. She was angry. She was upset. And she just said it out of anger, out of anger. So that tells me that she was just lying and she was just trying to, you know, Heavenly got under her skin and Heavenly can get under people's skin. Yes, she can. <laughs> yes, she can. Especially when she starts talking about your mama this and your mama that. You know, all that childish behavior that she does sometimes, which is why she has been in uh, therapy for like five, ten years <laughs> for her anger management. But anywho, um, so she told him, she was like, you know what? I 
I, I'm sorry. I, I'm honestly sorry. And she really, really looked like she was sorry. Like I can believe that Mariah was truly apologetic, you know, in that scene. But anywho, again, uh, Damon, you know, he forgave her also heavenly, you know, forgave her. But um, later that night when they were at the beach, it was set up all beautifully. You know, there was a lot of drinks. There was a lot of food. You know, as usual, they always, every time they go out somewhere, like, um, on their couples retreats, like, trips, they be hooking it up. I don't know if the TV, the TV show, the producers and stuff be setting all this up, or if they actually have to pay for all this stuff on their own. But, I mean, it'd be, like, five stars all the way when they go out. But, anywho, um... It was like the perfect setting for the couple's therapy. Now, at first, um, when Toya first exclaimed that her and Eugene was planning on taking over the couple's retreat after, you know, the disaster that Heavenly, <laughs> that Heavenly did last year, um, I had automatically assumed, I just assumed that Toya would be the one who would do the actual couple's therapy, you know, during the retreat. But when she took when she said she was giving Heavenly a second chance, I was like, oh hell no, not again. <laughs> why, Toya? Why? <laughs> but um then it was like, okay, I, I kind of get it. When when Heavenly was like, you know, what we where we messed up on last season for the couples retreat when she was doing uh, couples therapy where she messed up she said she didn't uh speak on her relationship at all so this time around she's like you know what she's just gonna be an open book you can ask me whatever you want to ask me um and i'll answer but i thought that was you know a pretty good idea for this time in the therapy and i think it really worked um it it, it sure wasn't dis disastrous like it was last time but anyway um the concept that she came up with was really nice and she basically just put her marriage out there and when dr jackie had asked her you know about submitting to her husband i was like good answer heavenly good answer i really thought um that was some great advice for any marriage, for any relationship, um, especially if you're about to get married or engaged. When she said husbands, um, basically she said her husband don't lead. He leads the family. She lets him lead the family, even though, you know, on the outside looking in, if you didn't know these people or watch the show, you'd be like, dang, that lady is really demanding. And, you know, but anywho, um, husbands don't lead your family with domination but with love and caring and submit to each other a lot of people think you have to submit to your man um i like how heavenly said you submit to each other it's just not you know one it don't just go one way but um make sure at you submit to god first keep god in your relationship then to each other and then to your family and i again i thought that was some really great advice um but some couples they do find it hard to submit to their spouses it's usually at least i believe y'all let me know what y'all think but i usually um I believe it's usually because a lot of couples, like the husbands, they do lead with domination or they're making, you know, their spouse feel weaker than them or less than them. And that usually results in low self-esteem issues, especially when it comes to the women, to the wife. Um, and then when Simone had asked her about, you know, how do they handle when they have disagreements about how they raise or how they discipline their children. Heavenly was like, Damon is a much better father to the kids than she is a mother. And then she started like welling up and started tearing up like she was, you know, trying to keep herself from crying. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, Heavenly, don't start crying. <laughs> because I hate, I know I mentioned this several times before, but I hate when I watch shows and they start crying because I automatically, it's like a button gets pushed. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I'm crying for. Oh, you know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, Damon was like, 
that's not true. You know, you can see him sitting on to the side and he's like, that's not true. Um, see, the thing is, you do not have to look that deep into their lives to see how much they love and value each other immensely. Um, I know firsthand what it's like to take care of your children by yourself. Not that they are, you know, they're married, but I know what Heavenly is coming from when she's like, I work all the time. I mean, I know what it's like to work all the time, how to have, you know, more than one job, trying to take care of the bills, take care of the kids. Um, and you don't get to see the kids as much as you wish. But it seems like her husband, he doesn't have an issue with that. It's like, I, I take him as the per, the type of person who doesn't even complain. And I think that's why Heavenly always gives him so much credit. I mean, I don't know how these two even got together. <laughs> Heavenly is like total opposite of Damon. Damon is like, he's so laid back and he's so cool. And um, you, I mean, he's just... Everything about him is just so calm and he's so soft spoken and he just seems like a gentle giant, you know, because he's he's not huge, but you know what I mean? He's he's a big man, he's much bigger than heavenly. And he just seems like a gentle giant, and then her on the other hand, she's like a little chihuahua, just rah, 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 rah. <laughs> all the time, always getting into it with somebody and arguing and fighting. But anywho, um, he basically just steps in, you know, <clears throat> steps in when he's supposed to. But when he, no, Heavenly works a lot. She has her own practice. She has her own practice. And I think that's why she was tearing up and everything, because she knows with her own practice that she doesn't spend a lot of time with her children. She was like, he talks to them more. He has conversations more. He plays with them more. He, you know, stuff like that. But he, again, he was like... That's not true. But basically, um, Heavenly, <clears throat> when she came, oh, Lord, when y'all, when she said <laughs> that she trapped Damon, at that point, I think that was when um, Damon had had enough of Heavenly because she was going on and on and on. First, she was saying, you know, he's this and he's that and he's this great person and da, 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 da. And basically was trying to make it seem like he's much, much, much better than her. Um, when he heard her say that he was trapped, that she trapped him, because it was a um, it was a scene, I think it was last season on the reunion show. And Andy had asked him about heavenly trapping him or something like that i can't really recall what it was but i think she did say yes and she said it again on this episode she said yes i trapped him i was like oh lord you should have saw everybody was like look at damon y'all look at damon y'all i mean his face was like what did she just say did she, did she just say she, did Heavenly just say she trapped me on national TV? <laughs> I think that was probably what was going through his head. Like, did she just say that she trapped me on national TV? But anywho, you know what? She was giving him a lot of credit and not giving herself, you know, any credit. Like, I think no matter if Heavenly would have got pregnant or not, he was so in love with Heavenly. He he was he mentioned this. He was like, I was so in love with her. Um, and I don't think that he would want his kids to see this show one day and hear their mom say, I trapped their father. And so that's why he spoke up. He was like, you know what? And I'm glad he spoke up on that because he was telling her, he was like, um, and Heavenly didn't say it in a negative way. She wasn't like, you know, I trapped him. You know, I got pregnant on purpose. You know, so she didn't say it in a negative way because there are people out there, men and women, and y'all know this is true, who will go through trying to trap people. There's women out there who will stop taking their birth control, uh, who will poke holes in condoms. Guys do it too. Guys do it too. <laughs> That's one thing I've always told my sons. Always. 
if you use protection, I mean, if you're going to have sex with somebody, use protection. But always make sure it's your own. Always provide your own protection. Bring your own protection. Not every woman out there is scandalous like that. But um, there's there's some of them are. Some of them are. Some of them are. We just can't deny that. <laughs> but anywho, um, he was just saying, you know what? Heavenly, you know, when I first met her, he was basically in it to win it. Whether she got, you know, pregnant or not, he was going to be there for her. And he knew, he knew that was his woman. That was going to be his wife. So, you know, I think he made this very clear because, like I said again, when he heard her say that, he was like, what? You trapped me. You didn't trap me. <laughs> you didn't trap me. I wasn't going nowhere. Whether you got pregnant or not, I wasn't going anywhere. But um, I thought that was really cool. But then, you know what? Um, <clears throat> When they, okay, like a lot of times the doctors and their spouses, they always do like community service. I really love that about this group of people. They always do community service. When they was on their trip um, in Antigua, they went to a clinic like they have done in the past. And they and I think it served like lower income families or people who don't have who might not have insurance, um, you know, health insurance. But a few of them really went out their way like. You know, this time on this trip at this clinic. And for one, Dr. Curtis and Quad. Like, okay, remember when Eugene, he was um, treating the lady. The lady who had said that she had been having chest pains. Um, her blood pressure has been high. And she haven't been taking her blood pressure medicine. He was like, uh, okay, um, I think you're going to have to stay here with us <laughs> because we got to make sure you okay. And Eugene was like, you know what? Her numbers aren't horrible, but the fact that they are not perfect either and she's supposed to be taking medicine and she's not. <laughs> so she told him she's not and then she's talking about her chest hurts or she she even said i think it was the night before she said my chest was hurting real bad so anywho when he was treating her she was with a little old lady a little cute old lady and she didn't want to walk home by herself so dr curtis and quad they volunteered to walk her home like walk her all the way home and i couldn't really tell how far it was it wasn't it didn't seem like it was really too far but still they didn't sign up to be walking people home from the hospital you know they could have easily just looked the other way or you know the lady could have sat there and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited you know, until the other lady was ready to go after she had been treated or whatnot. And the lady looked like she had to be a good at least 70, 75 years old, you know. But anywho, I thought that was really cool of them. Um, and then uh, Dr. Uh, I just said his name, Dr. Eugene, <clears throat> when he was treating that lady, he was just sewing so much care and concern and compassion and he even told her you know what you need to take your meds let me show you what meds can do for you and so that's when he had dr aiden you know to take his blood pressure i think it was dr aiden he had to take his blood pressure and took his blood pressure and it was really really good the numbers were really good and he no longer has to take them. He done lost like, I think Toya said he lost like 50 pounds, 50 or 60 pounds or something like that. Um, he had, he at first wasn't taking his medicine when he first found out he had high blood pressure. So he was trying to get through to this lady and let her know, even though you might hate taking that medicine, you know, still take the medicine and work out and do anything else that your doctor says. But anywho, he was like um, basically understanding where she was coming from because he was do going through the same thing. And he also, at first, at first, he wasn't taking his medicine. And granted, he's a doctor. We done seen all through this show, through the series <laughs> of them doctors. Every time something happened to them, they don't want to go see a doctor or they don't want to take the medicine that's prescribed or take the rest that, you know, get the rest that was subscribed. So, yeah, 
But anyway, I thought that was really cool of them. Kudos to Dr. Eugene and Dr. Scott and Quad. But remember this um, commercial? <coughs> hey, on Instagram. I'm just reviewing Married to Medicine TV show <laughs> that came on the other night. But y'all, I kept seeing the preview of, you know, the beach incident, the beach scene where Quad and Simone, was it Quad and Simone? They were sitting on the beach and in the commercials, a roach had crawled by <laughs> on the commercial. And I was like, I could not wait to see the show because I was thinking like, I know Quad had to lose her everlasting mind when she saw that cockroach, but oh, she didn't. And the reason why I thought she would was because y'all know bougie, y'all know Quad is bougie. <laughs> Quad be acting all bougie and she be acting like she ain't even the type who has ever, ever seen a cockroach in her life. <laughs> you said nice one. <laughs> but anywho, um, after the cockroach or, you know, after the cockroach, her and uh, Simone was sitting there talking and Simone basically was letting her know, uh, we're not here to push you. We're not here to try to make you discuss something you don't want to discuss because still this uh, divorce is still pretty new with Quad. She actually just filed, you know, in, in the TV show time. She actually had just filed basically like a few weeks back. Um, so it's still a very touchy situation for her. But Quad was like, you know, the main thing that I'm afraid of is just what happened. And Simone told her, you have to keep in mind, I've never been divorced before. So, you know, I can't give anybody any uh, advice. But Simone and Cecil almost were divorced as well. So she was trying to give her some good advice and she was telling her, you know, you have to keep your mind on the end game. A lot of people get married, they it don't work out, they file divorce, and then there, there's just fights and arguments and thank God they don't have any children. They don't have any children, so they don't have to worry about custody battles or, you know, child support or, you know, none of that kind of stuff. Um, but she was like, basically, you know what, just focus on the end game. Focus on what you are trying to do, which is basically sign your name on the dotted line and get your name back. Unless you, I don't, you know, some people keep their husband saying, I, I, don't, I don't know why. But anywho, you know, just just keep focused on the end game and everything will work out just fine. But anyway, who knows? Shoot, they might get back together by next season. I mean, everybody who seems to get separated or get separated almost on a divorce, almost on a verge of divorce, ends up getting back together on this show. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It don't look like it at this time that Quad would ever get back with him, but we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I also thought it was kind of cool how they used those shells, like in the end when they were on the beach. Mm -hmm. And I guess they were going to, they were trying to like uh, put everything in the past. You know, a lot of them had issues. They had fought and argued and had beefs and some of the couples, you know, are, like I said, getting back together. Um, I think, you know, the whole purpose of that was to everything that you, okay, once you forgive, once you forgive somebody, whether it's a friend, your partner, your mate, your husband, whatever, once you forgive, we all know we can't forget. We're human. We, we can't forget it. But in order for you to move on, you can't bring it up again. If somebody cheated on you and you decided to stay with them and you decided to stay with them, <laughs> you can't be bringing it up every other weekend or bringing it up every other month or every time y'all argue about something, <clears throat> he didn't put the toilet seat down. Oh, you probably didn't put the toilet seat down because you was with woo -doo 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 last night. I mean, come on. <laughs> that's what they, um, you know, so that's what they're trying to say. Everything that they've done in the past, you know, all the arguments, all the beasts, the cheating, the everything that, you know, some of them couples have been through, we going to throw it all away. They put it in the seashell 
and they tossed it out to the ocean. And I thought that was really cool. That that was a really good ending to this episode. I think uh, Mariah, not Mariah, uh, Heavenly did a really good job as, you know, being a therapist for the couples. Um, I liked how she was open and, she, you know, we focused basically on her relationship. Um, she always tried to make it seem like her relationship is perfect. And I know their relationship can't be that perfect, even though, you know, it seems like it on the inside, on the outside looking in. I'm sure they deal with things just like other couples, maybe not as severe or as deep as some of them other couples, especially with like the infidelity and everything. But I did, you know, like, I think she redeemed herself. <laughs> so y'all let me know. I think she redeemed herself this season. So she did a good job. Kudos and kudos to Toya for letting her redeem herself. But anywho, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me know about what y'all thought about uh, Heavenly, you know, doing the therapy session again. <laughs> did y'all think she redeemed herself? I did. <laughs> but anyway, make sure you put it down in the chat. Put it in the comments. Everybody on Instagram, um, make sure you also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I have two of them now. Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. And also Tanya Knows No Limit. So make sure you go over there and make sure you check that out. And also um, in the Facebook, I'm sorry, in the chat, I have the link to our Facebook group, which is called, again, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. It's on Facebook. Uh, so make sure you go over there, click request to join, and I will add you to the group. Um, people are slowly but surely finding their way over to the group. So I'm trying to get, you know, everybody, you know, up on that. But anywho, um, oh yeah, everybody on YouTube, make sure you guys, uh, follow me on Instagram and my Instagram, my IG is Tanya prime time TV, all one word. And I also just put in the chat, my uh facebook cake custom cake decorating page um the link to that so you guys can check that out if you want you can follow me over there too um all you have to do is click like on my cake decorating page um i am a pr professional custom cake decorator and i actually i don't even know <sighs> mm. i must love y'all to come and do this live today because i'm telling y'all Look at my eyes. Do I look tired? My eyes is all red and low. My eyes is always low anyway. <laughs> People be killing me. They be like, Tanya, open your eyes. Who was that? One of my close guy friends. Um, He had watched one of my lives one time. And he was like, why you never open your eyes? I'm like, my eyes is open. What is you talking about? They just look like they're closed because I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um... My mom's eyes was the same way. <clears throat> but anywho, um, check that out. It's called uh, Tanya's Delights, Slice by Slice. It's on Facebook. And as a matter of fact, um, the reason why I am tired and uh, looking like I need some sleep is because I haven't had any since, what time is it, 12, 12? Okay, I think over the last 26 hours, I probably slept for one hour because I've been baking. I had a lot of uh, customer orders and everybody on YouTube, I'm going to show you all what I have been doing. Oh, and y'all, Instagram, if you want to check it out, all you have to do is go to my YouTube channel to see me live right now. I'm about to just show pictures of the cake work, the cake art that I did for my customers this holiday. I have seven orders. And I started actually last night around like 10, 30. No, it's probably about 11. About 11. Yeah, it was about 11 because I did a live last night. Yep, I did a live video last night. So after the video, that's when I started my baking. Um, and then I just finished. 
Christmas is 12, 13 a.m. I think I finished my last order around about 9.30. 9.30. And some people might, might think it took you that long to make seven cake orders, but when you custom decorate and custom design cakes, um, it's not just taking out that box at your kitchen pantry that you bought from the store that you add some milk and eggs to or some I don't even know what you add to that mess. Uh, <laughs> oil and eggs, you know what I'm trying to say. Oil, eggs, water, whatever. But anywho, um, and then, you know, some people who are not cake decorators and no shade to the people who just make cakes at home for their families. <clears throat> they buy the little frosting in the little can off the shelf and just spread it on their cake the best way they can. No. When you're a custom cake decorator, Almost everything you do is from scratch, especially your frosting. I have never bought a thing of frosting um, before to decorate my cakes. Um, I always make my own frosting. But anywho, I'm going to show you guys what I was working on. Let's see, here it is. I just got to find the post. It's on my uh, Tiny's Delights page. Here it is right here. <clears throat> yeah, Tiny's Delights slice by slice on, um, on Facebook. Okay, so here we go. And I've been getting hit like... If y'all see all the notifications, just, just ignore the notifications because I didn't got like 5 million notifications in the last hour because when I post my cake work and stuff... People just like, 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 and comment, and you know how it is. But anywho, uh, so ignore all the um, notifications. But here's one of the orders that I did. It's a strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake. Um, that was for one of my customers. I actually had two orders of these this holiday. So that's the first one. And let's see. That's the second one. The other strawberry shortcake. Strawberry Crunch Shortcake Cheesecake that I did for another customer. And here's one of the banana pudding uh, cakes that I did for one of my customers. I actually had two banana pudding cake orders. So that's one of them. And that's the other one. Another banana pudding cake. If you notice on my cake art... I try to always create each cake a little differently, you know, just so it can have its own, you know, <clears throat> have its own thing. But anywho, uh, okay, here's a carrot cake. I had two. It was funny because normally um, last Thanksgiving, I had like five or six of the same orders and then like one that was totally separate from the other ones. But this time, this Thanksgiving, which is one of my busiest uh, holidays, besides graduation season, um, Thanksgiving is like my busiest season. So anywho, I had two strawberry shortcakes, um, strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake orders, and two banana pudding orders, banana cake uh, orders, and also two um, carrot cake cheesecakes these are carrot cake cheesecakes there's um a layer of cheesecake in there so i had two of those as well this is one of them for one of my customers um here's the other one that i did for another customer and as you see they look totally different so two of the same cakes as far as flavor and everything but they design totally different and then Somebody just wanted some cupcakes, some strawberry cupcakes. And so I made them some strawberry cupcakes. Half is strawberry, strawberry cream, um, strawberry cream crunch uh, cupcakes. And the other ones is just strawberry cupcakes with little strawberries on them. And she was like, just do them half and half. Some people like strawberry cupcakes and don't actually like strawberries. So... <laughs> that's just how some people are <laughs> they like strawberries like cooked out into cakes and cupcakes and stuff but 
they don't like to actually eat a strawberry. So that's why I had it half and half like that. So anyhow, those were the orders that I had um, this holiday. And of course, I got orders lined up for Christmas too. But anywho, um, just want to give y'all a little bit. Let's uh, every now and then I show y'all a little bit of what I do. But anywho, you guys on Instagram, thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for tuning in and watching my live. I'm up here looking at my eyes because I ooh, I just feel like I need a lot of sleep. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I need a lot of sleep. But anywho, um, as usual, in the meantime and in between time, Primetime Squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Okay, I hit the wrong button on the stupid YouTube. But anyway, I was telling all my Instagram people, toodles. And as far as you guys on YouTube, as usual, just like I just told the Instagram people. <laughs> in the meantime and in between time, until we meet again, which will most likely be tomorrow, I'll probably come at y'all live from uh, my godmom's house. That's where I'll be. Again, go to my godmom's house and kick it over the air. I haven't seen them in a minute. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing and just mingling and hanging out and playing cards and dominoes or whatever else, you know, um, that we do when we do when we win our crew. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, I hope y'all really, really do have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, remember, remember, show a lot of caring, show a lot of love, and treat others as you want to be treated. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. Be thankful. Be thankful for everything, your health, your strength, um, your friends, your loved ones, your children, your husband, your wife, you know, whatever, your job, your car. I mean, it's so much to be thankful for. When people say make those videos of what you want, what what are you most thankful for? I mean, it should take all of us an eternity to say what we're thankful for. I'm just thankful for being here still, surrounded by my children, surrounded by my loved ones. Um, I could be dead. I could be laid up in the hospital sick. Um. My children can be sick. I know people right now who are going through it with their families, um, having ill family members. Um, so, you know, people, when you know people are going through stuff, keep them in your prayers. Keep them in your heart. Um, I saw the other day, oh, my God, the guy who uh, killed that young doctor in the hospital. I guess it was her ex-boyfriend or ex-fiance or something like that but anyway he didn't kill her he didn't kill somebody else he killed a cop he killed um uh, and then he got killed and then like the fires in california there I, it's like every week there's a fire a widespread fire in california i don't know if the whole city trying to burn itself down the whole state i don't know what's going on but i think the last one was from a uh a campfire or something and they said 200 people over 200 people were missing houses just burnt to ashes over 200 people missing can you imagine just sleeping and just never waking up your house catch on fire while you sleep. And those forest fires, when they spread, they spread. If you don't, if you don't know ahead of time that it's coming, you just might not make it out. So y'all, this this Thanksgiving, just be thankful. Period. Period. For everything that you have. Everything that you have in your life. Okay. Anywho, enough of that. You guys, enjoy. Don't eat too much and don't be shopping too much. Don't spend too much money this Black Friday. <laughs> I got to tell myself that too. <laughs> but anyway, in the meantime and in between time, primetime squad, y'all stay safe. 
Be blessed. And I'm out.